Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. We are, as always, in front of our uh, very nice representative image of a rover on Mars, um, which is driven by algorithms that are uh, allow for uh, autonomous motion of the device on extraterrestrial surfaces. And we hope to be able to learn to analyze and design algorithms that uh, drive systems such as these towards autonomous operation. So what we have been doing um, until now is look at uh, many different function properties. Right? We started with, um, you know, first looking at a few function classes yeah, at the end of last week. And then based on these function classes, we defined uh, a few different notions. The first was the notion of definiteness, right? Which is where, uh, you know, which is sort of uh, important for talking about uh, asymptotic stability. Then we uh, sort of looked at the notion of radial unboundedness which uh, encapsulates or which sort of is going to help us conclude uh, global stability. And finally, last in the last lecture, we looked at the properties of decrescence. In each of these uh, lectures, of course, we um, also looked at examples. We also sort of um, looked at a few uh, relatively easier conditions to verify the corresponding definitions, right? So uh, in a few cases, the definition themselves are not too easy to verify. And therefore, we uh, used uh, some easier conditions to verify these. Yeah. So once we have uh, these properties, and of course, in the end, we also saw the most basic property, which is semi-definiteness. So once we have uh, these properties sort of um, well understood, we are uh, ready to uh, state the most seminal results in nonlinear control theory. And these are the Lyapunov theorems, right? So, or the Lyapunov stability theorems. So that is where we want to begin our discussion today. So we are in the fourth lecture of um, week four, all right? So before we state the theorems themselves, it is important that we um, look at a few, you know, what's the setup for the theorem and things like that, all right? Um, so we assume that we're talking about a nonlinear system of the form x dot is ftx. Of course, the time argument is being made explicitly explicit here and the function f which is the vector field is allowed to depend explicitly on time and also on the state okay um, further uh, we of course assume a you know a reasonable domain for the function f which is some initial time to infinite time some uh, ball around the origin and it maps to some rn right because x dot has to be in rn and we, of course, have some initial condition, right? x t0 is x0. Now, without any loss of generality, like we have done uh, so many times before, we are also going to assume that uh, x c equal to 0 is, in fact, an isolated equilibrium, OK? So in fact, um, we'll say isolated. We'll make that uh, formal. That, that this is in fact an isolated equilibrium point. We already discussed why we will have some issues if the equilibrium is not isolated, all right? So uh, we first assume that zero is an isolated equilibrium point, and that is the equilibrium point uh, which, which we are sort of interested in uh, analyzing, yeah? F is assumed to be locally Lipschitz continuous in this ball, which therefore exists, uh, ensures the existence of a unique solution, right? Because 
without existence of a solution there is no point in even talking about stability right if there is no solutions um, that exist or no unique solutions that exist then talking about stability becomes a, a serious challenge yeah and further uh, we define v dot using what is called the lead derivative or the directional derivative right what is the idea if you look at all these functions v that we defined they are functions of time and some variable x okay so when i take the derivative of that uh, i get partial of v with respect to t and partial of v with respect to x times an x dot now if i substitute for x dot from this particular vector field right then it becomes what is called a directional derivative so we for example i can use the same construction of v to analyze many nonlinear dynamical systems right however the derivative of v will depend on which dynamical system i was choosing to analyze okay and therefore v itself is not particularly connected to any uh, dynamical system yeah so this we should keep in mind the v construction itself is just a function of t and x it's not necessarily connected to a particular dynamical system it is when we take the derivative in the way we have defined here which is also known as the directional derivative is when we uh, introduce the dynamics in the form of the expression for x dot right here and that is why it is called directional derivative that is derivative of v along 10.1 is also how we sometimes say yeah so this is sometimes also denoted as derivative of v along uh, trajectories in fact of 10.1 Okay, so this is very important. It's very key that we remember this setup that the Lyapunov or the function v that we have looked at until now to evaluate definiteness and to evaluate radial and boundedness, etc., it's just merely a function of time and state x. We do not attribute any dynamics to it. When we take the derivative as per this definition here, that's when the dynamics actually filters into the equations. All right, and therefore, it's called the directional derivative okay so with this setup we are in fact ready to state the lyapunov theorems you will see that the statements themselves are very easy okay so we'll of course state them and of course start to look at examples parallelly all right so so these are called lyapunov stability theorems and whatever results we get using these lyapunov stability theorems are called the lyapunov's direct method okay lyapunov's direct method so uh, so we suppose for each one of this that there exists a function vtx which is uh, mapping t0 comma infinity cross br to r right? this is the same very similar earlier we were using r plus here but here we are specializing it to say that we only care about uh, the time starting the initial time of the dynamics okay so that, so therefore we have a t0 here it doesn't uh, really bother us what happens before t0 in most cases things will be the the function itself will be nice enough before t0 but since we do not care uh, since our dynamical system is going to be initialized at a particular t0 so we take the domain and time as t0 comma infinity and this is good enough for us the states of course are restricted to some ball around the origin again this is for the local results right now uh, notice that the solutions are also assumed to exist in this ball only for the dynamical system okay so we've consistently kept the same size of the ball around the origin in which there is the solutions also exist and in which the function v is also defined okay and we assume that it is positive definite you see this notation and we've already introduced this notation this notation implies that v is positive definite and what do we know we know that uh, this these two conditions together make it a candidate linear you know function okay a function which satisfies 
these two conditions that is um uh, well these two conditions in the sense um let's see in fact uh, this is not complete uh, it should be more i apologize this should be and there exists a c1 function v okay so v has to be c1 at least because we are going to take derivatives of it and partials of it so it has to it has to be once continuously differentiable at least so so any function which has these two properties that is it is a c1 continuous function right and it is v is positive definite then it is called a candidate lyapunov function and using a candidate lyapunov function only we can state the lyapunov theorems okay so once we have this candidate lyapunov theorem uh, function then once we if we evaluate the derivative and it turns out to be negative semi definite then the equilibrium is said to be stable it's not said to be stable then the equilibrium is stable it can be proven okay and the second statement we are just going to focus on these two statements okay very carefully the first statement says that if v dot is negative semi definite that is v dot is less than or equal to zero then the equilibrium is stable the second statement says that in addition if v dot is negative semi definite and v is decrescent right then the equilibrium zero is uniformly stable okay so if v dot is negative semi definite only then zero is stable if v dot is semi definite and on top of that you have v to be decrescent then the equilibrium is said to be uniformly stable okay so take a candidate lyapunov function which means that uh, c1 function which uh, is also positive definite and if it is negative semi definite we have stability if it's negative semi definite and v itself is decrescent then we have uniform stability okay so remember we when we talked about this uh, all these conditions positive definiteness and so on and so forth and, and negative semi definiteness negative definiteness decrescence we had mentioned that decrescence is associated with uniformity okay so as soon as i added decrescence i got uniformity okay all right so we want to of course start looking at examples right away we want to look at examples right away uh, so the first one that's you know already written out here you can see is x1 dot is x2 x2 dot is minus x1 okay so do you know what the system is this is a simple what is called simple harmonic oscillator this is a simple harmonic oscillator what does it look like in the phase plane if i make a phase plane plot of the trajectories of this system If I make a phase plane plot of the trajectories, yeah, then what does it look like? Uh, you make it bigger, easier to draw. Uh, looks like a bunch of circles. So the state space um, portrait of the system looks like a bunch of concentric circles. So that is, if I start my trajectory anywhere, yeah, if I start my trajectory anywhere, I will just continue on this circle forever. I will never leave this circle. Okay, so this is what the state space trajectories look like. Right. So it looks like a nice enough benign system. So we of course want to for solve uh, look at the um, stability analysis, right? So what do I do? Uh, I pick my v 
as half x1 square plus half x2 square. So what do I know about this? I know that this is v is positive definite, v is a c1 function. Right? It is once continuously differentiable at least. In fact, it is a smooth uh, function. So I can differentiate it as many times as I want as polynomials, right? Great. So, uh, so it's already a candidate Lyapunov function because it is c1 and it is positive definite. So excellent. So I'm ready to apply my Lyapunov theorem. So what do I want to do now? I want to compute v dot. Right? So what is v dot? It is, so v is not a function of time at all. So it's only a function of state. So all I have to do is do del v del x times x dot, right? Which is in this case, x2 and minus x1, right? So evaluating this is pretty easy. In fact, I mean, I, 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 I don't do it in the, with this formula and I don't recommend you do it with the formula either because if I just take derivative using the standard product rule, it just becomes x1, x1 dot plus x2, x2 dot. And what will I do? I will just substitute for x1 dot from here and x2 dot from here. Okay, and that's it. That's the directional derivative, right? Because all I'm doing is substituting from the current dynamics. And this is not difficult to see that you will get x1 times x2 plus x2 times minus x1, which is exactly zero, which is exactly zero. And therefore, it is also less than equal to zero, a negative semi-definite, right? So we had a candidate, we have a candidate Lyapunov function, which is x1 squared plus x2 squared over 2. And we have shown that v dot is less than equal to 0. Right. So what have we shown according to the Lyapunov theorem? We have shown that x1, x2 equal to 0, 0 is stable. Okay is stable now let's look at geometrically what's happening a little bit for this system so we've already applied the lyapunov's theorem great one version one lyapunov theorem we've already been able to apply so we've already learned to some extent how do we apply it we start by choosing a v and we have to of course make sure that it is c1 at least and it is positive definite only then it is a candidate lyapunov function on which a lyapunov theorem can be applied and then I compute v dot. Instead of doing this sort of vector calculation, I simply take a product rule. I mean, let's just take derivatives directly here. x1, x1 dot plus x2, x2 dot. And I substitute for the derivatives from the dynamics because I'm taking the directional derivative along this dynamics. And this is zero. So you can see it, it's super easy, right? It's turned out to be very, very easy. Okay, within like a uh, you know, couple of simple steps, I've concluded stability in the sense of Lyapunov. Now, one thing that should be obvious to you is that this is a very simple system, right? Because it was a simple harmonic oscillator, it's a linear system, right? So I can in fact solve for the uh, dynamics, right? And what will be the solution? It will be just sinusoid and uh, sines and cosines is what will be the solution, okay? That should be obvious. If, if you are not convinced, I would recommend that you solve this. Yeah, so sines and cosines are what will be the solution. But I can promise you, even finding and writing out the solution for this will take more number of steps than what you just did. Yeah, so this was significantly simpler. And what else? We reduce the analysis to a analyzing a scalar function. Okay. So geometrically, what is the relevance of this x1 squared plus x2 squared by 2? If you look at the face plane portrait, Right, that we do again. I could not have drawn the face plane portrait unless I could actually solve the system. I can do it numerically too, but of course, you then you. I mean, if you want to actually conclude stability from a face plane portrait, you'll have to draw the face plane portrait corresponding to every initial condition, which is usually not possible. All right, which is why we rely on Lyapunov analysis. But in this case, the face plane portrait does give us some insight. Right, what is this insight? Uh, if you look at this, um, what are these circles? These are concentric circles. So, 
mind system is always evolving on a circle and what's the equation of a circle it's x1 squared plus x2 squared equal to c so there is a circle centered at the origin right? these circles are centered at the origin although it doesn't seem like it unfortunately from this picture but they are centered at the origin right so uh, the solutions follow the equation x1 squared plus x2 squared equal to c equal to a constant so if i start on a circle start at any point i just start following a circle all right now if you look at my lyapunov function or candidate lyapunov function that i took this is simply the same quantity divided by 2 this guy is just this divided by 2 so just a scaled version of this okay and Therefore, it makes sense that when I took the derivative along this system, it came out to be zero because all my trajectories always lie on a circle. And therefore, x1 squared plus x2 squared at each point in time is always a same constant. And therefore, if I take the derivative here, if I do d dt here, then I do d dt here, and this is just zero. Right? Therefore, v dot coming out to be zero is no magic. Okay, coming out to be zero is not really magical or anything. Okay, so this is some actually somehow the energy okay of the system that I have encapsulated in this v. Yeah, and so therefore this is coming out to be a stable system. Excellent. So I can conclude the same thing again using like I said a uh, um, solving the system, but this is significantly simpler. All right. Great. Let's go forward and look at you know another example. This is just a slightly uh, twisted version of this, where I've included some time dependence. Okay, where I've included some time dependence. Now the question is, uh, can we actually uh, find an appropriately you know, function? Is the sort of the first question. Okay, it's sort of the first question. Um, may or may not be easy. Even I don't know if we can. Uh, do that. So let me see. Okay. So this is one of the sort of issues that everybody deals with is that an appropriate choice of Lyapunov candidate Lyapunov function must be chosen. And whether this is possible uh, always is not very clear. It is not very clear. Unfortunately, it's not too clear. Okay. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's what it is. All right. Uh, so let me see if 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 I can actually um, choose an appropriate Lyapunov function. Right. In this case, it's obvious that if I choose um, v as my earlier one, if I choose v as x one squared by two plus x two squared by two, I have a problem because this is x one x one dot plus x2 x2 dot and this is x1 x2 minus x2 x1 divided by t plus 1 okay so these don't cancel out anymore right these don't cancel out anymore and that sort of results in a problem hmm? that sort of results in a problem okay um so let's see if we can do something else. Mm -hmm. In fact, maybe I will not be able to do something for this case. I'm going to slightly change this example to this. Hmm. Suppose I change this example to this. In in this case, anyway, nothing worked out. So suppose I I will erase this guy. So this is not a good enough choice. Yeah. So let me see if. Hmm. Is this something for which I can find the Lyapunov function? 
see i'm already starting to struggle a lot you see so i don't think even this will help me because suppose now i do something naive like i choose one plus t um x1 squared by 2 plus x2 squared by 2 okay then what happens is i get x1 x1 dot plus x1 squared by 2 plus x2 x2 dot right i got this second term here this was um i'm sorry wait a second i think i missed something here um i think i missed something here this should be uh one plus t still has to be multiplied here so the first term here is obtained by taking the derivative of this x1 square the second term here is obtained by taking the derivative of this guy all right all right and the third term is of course the derivative of this okay now if i substitute right now if i substitute for my dynamics i will get x1 x2 and get uh, 1 plus t x1 x2 plus x1 squared by 2 minus x1 x2 divided by 1 plus t okay okay oh, okay I, I don't think this worked at all uh, apologize this is wrong I mean, this is not what i wanted i wanted it to be i apologize for that i wanted it to be uh half x1 squared plus the other way around actually one plus t x2 squared i'm sorry i wrote it the other way around and if i try this this is x1 x1 dot plus 1 plus t x2 x2 dot plus x2 squared divided by 2 okay and now if i substitute here i get x1 x2 from the first term from this guy uh, then i get plus 1 plus t x2 times minus x1 over 1 plus t plus x2 squared over 2 okay so something nice does happen this 1 plus t cancels out here and therefore this guy cancels with this guy this is why i chose something like this but then something really bad also happens because i end up with x2 squared by 2 I end up with x2 squared by 2. Right? This is not nice to say the least. Right? This is not nice to say the least. Right? So, so this is uh, this is where things can get wiry. Right? It's not that easy. Now the question is: Is this actually a stable system? And is is this an actually a stable system or not? Uh, in this case, so finding the solution is also not going to be very easy okay so so now now see what has happened is that this is uh, not uh, it's in fact in fact it turns out that uh, i'm sorry i wasn't careful here i should say implies v dot is equal to so v dot is equal to v dot is equal to in fact this turns out to be positive semi-definite right and this is not good at all because if you notice all the lyapunov theorems rely on v dot being negative semi-definite or negative definite okay we do not want a v dot to be positive definite or positive semi-definite at all okay so what's the outcome the outcome is we don't know cannot conclude on stability yet yeah this is one of the issues with the lyapunov functions right so we should we should be aware of it from the get-go right 
just because I chose a function v, in fact, it was the second choice, just because I chose the function v and I found a v dot which did not satisfy the nice properties that I wanted, does not imply that the system is not stable or asymptotically stable. Yeah, it may just be the case that I was not good enough at selecting the Lyapunov function. Okay, so the Lyapunov function is still a hunt. You have to be able to find the appropriate Lyapunov function. Okay, you have to be able to find the appropriate Lyapunov function, and that is still a hunt, and that's why. I sometimes say it's actually Lyapunov art. Yeah, so it's an art to finding the right Lyapunov function. Anyway, so so what we looked at today was the uh, beginning of our Lyapunov theorems. Right, we saw the theorem on stability and uniform stability. They read very very simple. That's what we've noticed, and we have tried to work out some examples. We in fact failed in. Uh, Finding an appropriate candidate Lyapunov function for a very seemingly uh, simple looking system. Right. And so we will continue uh, in this way. We'll try to construct Lyapunov functions. We'll try to conclude something about the stability um, for systems such as these. Okay. So that's going to be the plan subsequently also. That right? we're going to look at a few more examples and also continue the current example. All right. That's it, folks. See you again. Thanks. Mm -hmm.